Hello, my name is Daniel Begheri. Um, I'm coming to you from uh, Copan, Honduras. Uh, I am a CUSO international volunteer. Uh, I'm working as an indigenous people rights advocate and also a human rights uh, defend, defend, defender. Um, uh, I been, I've been working with CUSO since uh, February of 2017. And uh, my uh, station here is with uh, OCDI International and the Federation of the Maya Chorti People uh, here in Copan district of Honduras. Uh, when I first came or when I first arrived in Honduras, I really didn't know all that much about the country or the issues at hand. Um, other than the books and the articles that I, uh, that I had read about Honduras, um, I, didn't know, I didn't have much, much personal experience of the issues that uh, are facing the indigenous communities here uh, in uh, Copan. Um, uh, but when I first came here, I uh, developed a five-phase strategy or methodology, uh, which I based all my works on. Uh, for the first six months, really my focus had been to uh, develop or harbor positive relationships with the community. Uh, it is especially important with indigenous nations uh, that you gain acceptance into the community first before you begin any type of work. Uh, so my focus has been and continues to be developing positive and harboring or harboring positive relationships with the community members and especially the leaders of the community. Uh, the organization that I primarily work with um, is, well, the local NGO OPDI, but also the federation or the, on, the only federation, uh, the National Federation of the Maya Chorti people, who are the local indigenous communities here in Copan. Um, uh, as I was saying, I was, I was working directly with the leaders of the community and it took me nearly six months to really, um, be, get, really get to know the community, get to know the leaders and uh, become, uh, and get, get, get acceptance into the community uh, and to gain trust with the community. And that's really important with indigenous nations, uh, especially because we're, uh, we're talking about a community or a nation of people who have had to face uh, years of foreign intervention and uh, co issues regarding colonization and imperialism. Um, uh, following, the, uh, following, following this uh, primary step, that is to develop relation and gain relationships and gaining acceptance into the community, um, I, I, fo I, I followed through to the second phase of our. Um, about my work, which was to really develop a, a, research, a research strategy uh, in order to get to know the deeper issues that are at play and, uh, and to get a, get a good understanding of the historical, cultural, and social economic context of the communities that I work with. Um, this is the second phase. This was the second phase of my work, and that is still ongoing. Um, uh, so I would say I spent somewhere between uh, three to four months just doing my research about the community. And the result of my research was the development of the, uh, the uh, uh, national, national Strategic Plan for the Implementation of Indigenous Peoples' Rights. Within this plan, we have seven, uh, we have seven different themes that we work towards. Um, these include uh, access to uh, uh, land rights, traditional occupations or promotion of traditional occupations, access to education, eliminations of all forms of political discrimination, uh, in uh, development of uh, uh, accountable institution, accountable indigenous institution, access to justice, and access to health. So we have seven themes that we are uh, that we've identified, and we've developed this uh, we've developed this strategic plan in coordination and in consultation with the indigenous leaders, which is a uh, fundamental indigenous fundamental human rights, but also it's a fundamental aspect of indigenous people's rights. Um, so the strategic plan was the result of our research and the work of CUSO International in collaboration with uh, the leaders of the Maya Chorti people. And based on this plan, we developed various uh, proposals, one of, which, one of which was the project of access to justice, which we are uh, working in collaboration with OCDI and with Koninj. Uh, and we're focusing on uh, one of the themes, which is access to justice. 
uh, primarily we're working with a lot of the women of the community uh, to make to um, advocate against violence of uh, violence against women because indigenous women tend to be one of the uh, one of the more um, one of the more uh, one of the groups that are more susceptible to violence and they are disproportionately affected by issues regarding sexual violence, uh, sexual abuse and, uh, and rape, unfortunately. Um, so we've been working with, uh, with OCDI and the project has been funded by the European Union. It's called Eurojusticia. Um, uh, we've been developing workshops with the Maya Charity women, with the, uh, with the women leadership of the Maya Charity community. Um, workshops about human rights, workshops about indigenous people's rights. Uh, we've also we've also worked closely with the community leaders to organize Mayan ceremonies, promote Mayan culture, uh, and also uh, sometimes develop marches for. Uh, uh, we develop, develop we've uh, organized marches to uh, to denounce violations of fundamental rights, violations of human rights, which is unfortunately extremely prevalent pre prevalent uh, here in Honduras. And indigenous people continue to be victims of uh, social and political, systematic social and political oppression. Um, uh, everything, so far, everything has been going uh, smoothly. I think uh, one of the greatest things that I've taken away from my experience here so far is just the ability and the opportunity to be able to work in collaboration with uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous human beings uh, who, who risk their lives every day to stand up towards, uh, stand up against the injustices that they face uh, in their communities. And uh, I think that's really admirable. And just being able to support the community in their struggles has been an honor for me. Uh, seeing the poverty and the uh, the oppression that these com that the communities face, that the indigenous people face every day, uh, has really encouraged me to continue my work in human rights and has motivated me to uh, develop my relationships even more in order to uh, support the communities and support indigenous nations everywhere throughout throughout the Americas in their quest for uh, self-determination, in their quest for uh, establishing fundamental rights. Um, if I had to, if I had to uh, in, say anything, anything about CUSO, I think CUSO International has been a phenomenal support uh, for uh, myself and what, but also for the local communities here, because their their our, the model of CUSO really helps us to get engaged on the ground level, on a person on an interpersonal level as well with the local communities, uh, and it's it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a phenomenal opportunity for me as a rights advocate. It's been a it's really been an honor for me to be able to do what I do. That's to defend human rights, to promote indigenous people's rights in a part of Honduras that I would have otherwise never had the chance to do so. Uh, I want to thank CUSO, the communities here, the indigenous nations, the indigenous Maya Chortin nation, the, le the leaders, uh, and uh, uh, everybody, everybody who is, who's helping us to get publicity. And we hope to be able to continue our work in collaboration with uh, any organization or any government institutions that are able to help us here in Copan. Thank you.